Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. So earlier this week I went to Poundland. Uh, I bought some of the tech that you can find in the Poundland deck tech. The, the. I went into Poundland and bought some tech that, uh, yeah, it's questionable. And so today in the stream, we are going to be finding out are the products basically just e-waste waiting to go into the bin? Or are they actually something you might want to use? Let's find out. You want that boom box? I promise you don't, Cassie, because it probably sounds like a tin can. Now, let's get into the bag of products. So in total, I spent 35 pounds on everything in this bag. I bought five items, so pretty cheap given the amount of items I bought. They seem like the kind of stuff to break in three days. Yeah, that's something we won't be able to test in this stream is the longevity of these devices and how reliable they are. But let's start with the first product, the gaming sound bar. Okay, got some paper looking packaging here and a built-in cable and that is it. That is literally it. Okay, well first off the bat, it does have some weight to it. Like it's not completely hollow, like I was kind of expecting. This just goes to a USB port and a headphone jack. So it's USB powered, so you don't need wall power for this, which is good. It also seems to have a little wheel on the side there. You can see controlling the volume, I presume. Obviously everything's made of plastic and it's a you know, very cheap feeling, but I mean, if it sounds good, it might be worth the money. The money being six pounds for this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did you hear that? I went to plug in the speaker, but it's kind of got like this weird staticky noise as you plug it in, which is a bit unsettling. It's only while you're plugging it in, it's not. Nope, nope, I take that back. It is while it's plugged in as well. There is a very, very mild like hum to the speakers. I mean, it's not too bad because when it's sitting, you know, far away from you it's not too bad just gonna bring up an YouTube video hello everyone welcome to the stream today we are going to be looking back at a piece of history oh, you're supposed to be off on the 9th of January 2007 Steve Jobs showed the world this the original iPhone that doesn't sound half bad for six quid sure there's the background static noise and sure, the bass is quite loud, but the vocals are quite pronounced. It's not, it's not that bad, I'd say. If you just want to watch YouTube videos, that sounded all right. I'd, I'd listen to that if I didn't have any other speakers. Uh, now we will do some gaming with it later. Speaking of gaming products, I bought a four pound gaming mouse as well. It's a wired mouse, but for the price, that's to be expected. Got listed on their ergonomic right hand design. Three macro buttons, adjustable DPI modes, and low input lag. All features that you want on a gaming mouse, but uh, does it actually have any of those things? It also says RGB lighting and flawless precision. Let's move my Razer mouse out the way that costs about the same as everything that I've bought today combined and uh, look at this gaming mouse instead. And there we have the mouse. Oh my word. That's uh, that's quite a chunkster, really. That's quite quite a big mouse. Um, ooh, can you hear that? Yeah, very rough sounding. Yeah, but there's no padding on here at all. It's just it's just plastic rubbing against my mouse mat. I mean, it does look pretty cool. It's got a DPI button in the middle. Some programmable board. Oh, they're very clicky and very deep. Got kind of a cheap feeling scroll wheel as well. The shape is kind of comfortable. It, it does fit my hand. You can see the length of the cable is pretty darn long. Four pounds so far, not too bad. Certainly much better than my first mouse I ever used for gaming, which was a Microsoft Basics mouse. There we go, you can see the RGB there. It was talking about on the box, on the side, on the back, and through the scroll wheel and I'm not sure it's supposed to be coming out underneath, but it is. The DPI button does seem to work. Now with this being a budget mouse, I don't suspect 
you, there's any sort of software. Like with my Razer mouse, there is software to change the DPI presets. I don't suspect there's anything like that for this. So now to test out the gaming sound bar and the gaming mouse, we're going to play some games. So what should we play? You guys always seem to say balloons, but that's not a very good testing game because that doesn't test the sound very well and it doesn't definitely doesn't test the mouse. Do they always say balloons? We did balloons last time. Something like this, Balloon Terror Defense 6. This is a more casual game. You can see I'm using the mouse and I'm using the soundbar. Also, one thing you may be able to hear is the fact that the click of the mouse is, uh, is very loud. Okay, we're here in TF2 with the gaming mouse and gaming soundbar. Okay, so if I had to describe the sound of the soundbar, the six pounds, you can't really complain. It makes sound, sure everything's a bit boomy sounding, like shooting the rocket is like kind of ear blasting. It's not so much loud, it's just very bassy and very boomy sounding. Pro TF2, you're seeing me fail at TF2 right now. I've got one kill and three deaths. And then the mouse, I mean, it's somewhat comfortable, I guess. I, I just don't really like how it feels rubbing against my mouse mat. You could probably get used to the clickier switches, the amount of pressure it takes to push down the switches because it is more than my regular gaming mouse and what I'm used to. But overall, you could probably get used to this mouse. So for £10 for the gaming soundbar and the gaming mouse combined, I think this is a fine little setup if you're just starting out in gaming. Obviously, it's not going to be anything that will give you a competitive advantage, and if you're interested in competitive gaming, this soundbar is not going to be good enough for that. But if you're just looking for some casual gaming, or if you want to use the soundbar for like a console, and you want to plug it into your Nintendo Switch or your Xbox, I can see that being a reasonable thing. Or if you play on a laptop, it definitely sounds a lot better than laptop speakers, I can tell you that much. Alright, I think that's enough game testing. I only really wanted to test one game because we've got other products to test that aren't gaming related. Oh, using my normal mouse again is so nice. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at would be the fitness tracker. Now, already this box feels completely empty, but uh, how could can a fitness tracker be for £10? On the side here, it has these features of integrated multi-sports and sleep mode, links with phone to receive notifications, alarm setting, remote shutter. Has this thing got a camera on it? Got a find your phone function, long battery life, blood pressure reader, estimated readings, blood oxygen reader, estimated readings. Yeah. Something for £10 is not going to accurately be able to, to read those things. Oh, remote shutter is like if you... So if you connect this to your phone, you can put your phone away from you on a tripod and then take a photo by tapping this. And then on the other side, you can see someone getting fit. Whoa. You can see it's part of the Vido lifestyle brand. This person's definitely enjoying the Vido lifestyle. Look in the box. So you've got... In the top there, you've got the smartwatch. And then in the bottom of the box, you've just got this interesting charging connector. There's a camera on it. No, it doesn't have a camera on it. I was wrong about that. It does also have instructions here, which are about as bland as can be. It tells you how to pair it with your mobile device using the Fitbit tracker, what the different buttons do. There's an app you can download. Very nice. And first impressions, I mean, it feels pretty sturdy. Right, let's see if it's charged. Turn on the tracker by pressing and holding the function button for three seconds. One, two, three. It's not turned on. Okay, now where does this charging connector go? Or does this come out? Come out of the back. I don't want to break it. Aha, there we go. So you have to take off the band to charge it. So not exactly very convenient to use, it must be said. Just slide in there and it's in there. So I'm going to leave that to charge for a bit. On to the next product is the Friends headphones. I had to buy the Friends headphones. I just saw this in Power Man and was like, of all the like brands that you could have put on a pair of headphones, why put Friends. Like, what does Friends have to do with audio gear? I have no idea. So in the box, 
the headphones themselves, along with a gigantic piece of plastic. I'm noticing a bit of a trend here, there's like, you know, this giant box for a little product, this massive amount of plastic, they don't seem to be particularly environmentally friendly with this packaging. But here we have the Friends headphones, there you go, you can see the Friends design there, and they are adjustable, you can as much as it is incredibly hard, the quality of it is obviously very cheap. This feels very flimsy. The headband does feel quite sturdy though, given the size and thickness or girth, I guess you could say. And this doesn't feel like the worst plastic in the world. Obviously these are on-ear headphones. Just trying to adjust it a bit more for my head. How cool do I look with my friend's headphones? Okay, so I'm noticing a bit of a, a bit of an issue here. They're too small for my head. I mean, this is extended as much as possible. You can see I can't push it up anymore. Like, who are these? Who are these headphones for? Because they're friends branded, which is a brand that, like, friends is from the '90s. Like most people. Most children now, I was born after Friends stopped airing, and I'm turning 20 this year. Are they for adults? Because they'd be the ones interested in the Friends series? But then they don't fit adults. Or would they be marketed for kids? Because they're kind of like smaller headphones, but children nowadays won't know what Friends is. I don't know who would be interested in those. Yeah, exactly, Cassie. See, Cassie agrees. I don't know who'd be interested in them. The cable isn't particularly long either. Okay, so let's... Let's have a little listen to this introduction again with these. The Friends headphones. These are so quiet. I have to turn it up to 100% volume just to be able to hear it. If I do this, it sounds better. Okay. So they don't sound very good, first of all. They don't make a very good seal. The whole point of headphones is they're supposed to make a seal on your ear so that you you get the sound in your ear, but the sound's just going wherever it wants. I honestly have no idea who these headphones are for <laughs> or why they exist. Let's take a look at the fitness tracker now that it's been plugged in for a little bit. Well, hey, we've got some life in it. You can see it on there, it shows the time and it shows how many steps you've done. It turns off quite quickly though, which is a little bit annoying. And there you go. Apparently, I've done 27 steps by just sitting here putting it on my wrist. That's encouraging. Okay, so let's try and get the fitness tracker app Android download. Oh, I don't know if you can read that on my phone. File might be harmful. Do you want to download yoho underscore blah 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 dot apk? So this app isn't on the app store. This app is on some unsecure website without HTTPS, with a random download for the APK file. Needless to say, uh, I'm not going to be downloading that. Is there anything you can actually do on here? It's a, ooh, state. What is it trying to tell me? Oh, BPM. Is it a touchscreen? I don't think it's a touchscreen. Sports, music, more, and then back to the screen. How do I... How do I get it to read anything? What if I leave it? Sports. So, um, yeah, slightly disappointed with the fitness tracker. I'm not sure you should buy this. <laughs> if you want to install the app when you buy this, go ahead. But I'm not because it could be a virus. It could be malware. It could be spyware. I don't know. I'm not going to find out. And speaking of trackers, I did actually buy the wireless tracker thing, which is supposed to be like an air tag, as you can see by the pictures at the bottom. You put them on your belongings. You can see they've got them on their keys, their bag, and then you can track down where your belongings are using your phone. However, this is also apparently part of the Vido, I don't know how to say that, lifestyle. And so if this is going to ask me to install the same app, um, 
that's going to be a little inconvenient. So opening up the box, we have a big bit of plastic with the tracker itself, as well as a instructions. The product is a wireless device using the iSearching application. So let's go onto the App Store here and look for iSearching i searching app installing allow i searching to take pictures and record video allow i searching to access your device's location at all time allow i searching to access photos media files on your device allow i searching to record audio why does it need any of these positions location i can understand you know gps so you can connect to the tracker but why do you need to access my my camera my microphone bit suspicious there we go interesting that it uses it doesn't use google maps but it uses baidu maps which appears to be in an asian language that i can't read found a vido tracker there and a different device i don't know what that is connect to vido tracker so if i do alert that seems to to function correctly. So now, for example, if I were to put this on my keys, I could now press the alert button in the app. It starts beeping. And then when I want it to stop, I press stop. And it stops. There you go. So given the fact that this device actually uses an app on the Play Store. I feel a little more safe for endorsing this product. But my question is, can you actually locate the tracker? Okay, so you can go into the settings here. You can't change the ring tone, but you can change the ring ton. Um, once you actually click through, they're not called ring tons, they're called alarm tons. Funny name. So the, the first one is that. Alarm ton two. It's just playing these out on my phone at the minute. It's alarm. So what if I set it to alarm turn seven and then go back out? Does does the tracker play that? If I do alert now, it's definitely still beeping. There is also just a straight up photograph app. I'm not entirely sure why. There's a photograph app in my find my app. Those are some lovely sounds. Debatable. Debatable. So maybe this is not like AirTags after all, because there doesn't seem to be any kind of setting to track the location of this. So I guess if you lose something around your house, this would be quite helpful. But if you lose something out and about, this doesn't seem to have any GPS things in it. So if you are just looking for a basic like a beepy thing to go on your keys, it's all right, I guess. I don't mind it. It's, it's a pretty simple device. I might keep this. And so that's it. That's all the products I've got for today. we we'll do a quick rundown of everything we bought. So the first product was the gaming soundbar. Conclusion of this, wouldn't use it for gaming, but not at that bad as just like a cheap speaker to play YouTube videos or casual gaming. The gaming mouse, pretty good. I don't know, it's pretty comfortable, pretty clicky. Doesn't feel like it would break too easily. Just a little bit rough from there being no padding on the bottom of the mouse. But apart from that, it works. It's a pretty good mouse. Then we have the fitness tracker and the friends headphones, which I would both advise you avoid. Now these headphones were actually one of the most more expensive things that we looked at today at 10 pounds. So uh, yeah, avoid these. And then this I just didn't want to install the app because it's not from the app store and it's just a random file off the internet. And then last but not least, you've got the wireless tracker. As so if you want something to put on your purse or your wallet, or if you want to put it on your keys, if you're going to lose them, this might be all right. A quick little video. It is currently exactly midnight. And this stupid thing started beeping. So needless to say, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to be using this thing because it has started beeping at random at all hours of the day and it just started beeping and it is currently midnight. So no, um, I would not recommend using this anymore. <laughs>
if you don't want it to start randomly beeping at you wherever you are. So, yeah.